Iteration versus recursion. In this video, we'll take a look at the pros and cons of solving a similar problem iteratively or recursively. Let's start by looking at the module factorial.py. In this module are two methods which perform the same thing, the exact same thing, but two different ways. They both return the factorial of a number n, the factorial of an integer n. Rec factorial, that is recursive factorial, does so recursively. Iter factorial, that is iterative factorial, does so iteratively. Recursive factorial has the three things needed in order to have a, f a recursive function. First, it has a base case. If n is less than or equal to 1, return 1. So, factorial of 1 or 0 is 1. Else, return n times recursive factorial n minus 1. So here we have the other two requirements. We have a recursive case which moves us one step closer towards the base case, and we have a call, oops, okay, a call to recursive factorial inside of recursive factorial. And let me fix this display. There we go. Iterative factorial returns factorial iteratively. We start with factorial equal to 1, and then we iterate over the range 1 to n plus 1, so that we're doing 0, 1, 2, I'm sorry, so we're doing 1, 2, 3 instead of 0, 1, 2 in the case of 3 factorial. And then we increase factorial by multiplying it times i for each number in the range all the way up to the number whose factorial we want to obtain. And then we return that number. They're both fairly simple. One thing that recursive methods have going for them is they can oftentimes be simpler to read than iterative methods. In this case, the difference may be harder to see, but if we were doing a lot more inside of this function here, we might see the text of this function expand um, at a faster rate as we're implementing it than we would a recursive function, where we're simply calling the same code over and over again via the function. It's not true all the time, but it very well may be true. Let's look at a couple of other scripts. Here's a script called recursivefactorial.py, which imports factorial, the module factorial we just looked at, and also the sys and the time modules. And on the second line here, you'll see that recursive factorial prints the result of factorial dot recursive factorial, so the method we just looked at, the factorial of whatever argument is given by the user. And we cast that argument to an int to avoid a type error. The lines surrounding this file 
will tell us how much time it took for this method to complete, for this call right here to complete. We establish a start time with the time module. And then down here in the print statement, we find the total time, the duration time, by subtracting the start time from the current time, which would be the end time. If we multiply that times a thousand, we have the number of milliseconds it took this method to run. So recursive factorial will take an argument, find the factorial of that argument, and return the number of milliseconds that it took to run to find that factorial. Iterfactorial.py does exactly the same thing, except it calls iterfactorial instead of recursive factorial. If you look at the two together, you'll see they're exactly the same, except for what method they're calling. Okay. So let's start with let's start with iter factorial of five. Okay, the result is one twenty. That's correct, and it took seven thousand and eighty one milliseconds, or I'm sorry, point uh, zero seven zero eight one milliseconds to complete. Let's try the same thing with recursive factorial. Okay, same result, good. It took a slight bit longer, but really not too much to care. But let's raise the number. Let's do 20 for good measure. Okay, obviously the number is going to be much larger, and we have a time. And let's do the same thing with recursive. Okay, now the iteration took just a slight bit longer than recursion. So let's really try something here. All right, now the numbers are really starting to get a little more of an appreciable difference. So recursion took 0 0.06 milliseconds longer to complete. Let's see what happens if we go higher. All right, look at that. Now we can really see the time difference between iteration versus factorial. So why do we see this difference in time? Well, without going into too much detail, it takes longer to call a method which is what recursion is doing. It takes longer to call a method over and over again than it does to iterate over a list and perform a simple operation on two numbers, which is what iteration is doing. Now right now, each of these is still executing in less than a millisecond, so it really doesn't matter that much to us. In other words, the difference is not appreciable but if you were to iterate or recurse over a whole bunch of data, then time might start to become a consideration. I would bet, though, that before you start worrying about time, you might start worrying about space, and we'll see what we mean by that.
let's go even further. Okay, now we have a really long number. <clears throat> but we can still see the time here. All right, let's do recursion. Uh-oh, what happened? So, we have a runtime error. So this kind of error means, in this case, that nothing went wrong except, uh, that is, nothing went wrong computationally. But something has happened in the architecture. Maximum recursion depth exceeded in comparison. Well, what the heck does this mean? Each time that we call a recursive method, so in this case, recursive factorial, each time we call that inside of itself, we have not yet returned or finished the call above it. So let's say we're doing factorial of 5. The first call is looking at the factorial of 5. The second call is looking at the factorial of 4, and then 3, and 2, and 1, and then it returns. But even when we are looking at the factorial of 1, that first call to 5 has not yet completed. Why? Because it depends upon the factorial of 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, in order to in order to complete, in order to finish executing. So when we have such a large number, like 1,000 was enough in this case, we're storing many, many instances of calls to recursive factorial on what's called the stack. And the stack can only hold so many calls to recursive factorial can only hold so many calls to a method. If we exceed that limit of the stack, then the code blows up. Then we get this runtime error. So this is one definite advantage that iteration has over recursion, is that we can avoid a runtime error like this by overflowing the stack. Let's look again at factorial.py. Think about what has to be stored in memory. Every time that we call recursive factorial, we have to store the previous call to recursive factorial in memory as the second call to recursive factorial is called. The next call is called. We are also storing a result, which is being passed back up the stack to each call. Iteration is storing a list, and it's storing a number, which is updated by a simple operation. That is far less memory to accomplish the same behavior as the recursion up in recursive factorial. In the next video, we'll take a look at an instance where recursion can be very useful.